So before we get started, we need to make sure that we have our local uh, secure shell installation set up correctly. Uh, so I have here a Windows PowerShell uh, and notice it opens up in my home directory. Uh, so I can go into uh, a folder called uh, SSH. Uh, if this doesn't exist, then you need to create this folder. Uh, and I'll have a look at the files that we have here and there's a config file, uh, which I want to show you. So I'm gonna open up uh, Visual Studio Code uh, and have a look in this config file. And so what I've got here is uh, an alias uh, for a host that I'm going to connect to frequently. And basically this is the IP address uh, and this is the username. And I set this up here because honestly, I really hate typing in IP addresses. Uh, and so what that means is that I can now run, um, for example, SSH uh, into WorkPy and I didn't need to type in that IP address. Uh, I'm simply able to just um, log uh, directly in. Uh, now, another thing is uh, I hate typing in passwords. Uh, so what can I do to uh, improve the situation? Well, there is a uh, SSH keygen, uh, which is actually installed along with the Windows um, SSH installation, which will generate uh, what's called a uh, public and private key pair. Uh, and so I can just run this, um, press enter to accept the defaults and what I will get here are these new files. Um, so IDRSA and IDRSA.pub. Um, so this is now a secret password that can be used uh, to log in. Um, uh, and this here is the, the shareable um, side of that, uh, of that key. Um, so what I need to do uh, is actually copy this um, IDRSA file over to um, my Linux device. Uh, so if I would, uh, just print it out, you get this basically um, public key pair. So this is not a secret, you, you're allowed to see this on YouTube. Um, this is the public side of the uh, the key pair. The other one is is the secret. Uh, and what I want to do is, is copy this to the right place on uh, my um, Raspberry Pi. And so the command that I want to run uh, is that I wanna cat this into uh, a file which is called uh, authorized keys authorized uh, keys. Uh, and so I need to obviously type in my password. Uh, and so that will now um, place this file, uh, the contents of this file onto uh, into this place on the device. Uh, so now if I run uh, SSH WorkPy, hey look, no password, um, isn't that nice? Uh, so the next thing of course is we want to work with um, Visual Studio Code. So to, to work in VS Code, uh, I need to connect remotely. So once I've installed the remote extension, there is this option here to, to open remote. Um, I'll just show you my extension settings. Uh, so the remote extension uh, is, we want remote SSH is this one here. Uh, so uh, you need to make sure that you have this uh, extension installed. Uh, with that installed, uh, I now click here, I want to um, open a new remote window. I want to use the one that comes from remote SSH, so connect to host. Uh, because of the alias that I set up before, it's already prompted right here. Uh, and it will now open a new window and uh, connect. Now the first time it needs to install some software, uh, so this will, will take a moment and you see I'm now connected to this device. Uh, what I'm going to do is open a folder on there. And so I have a, a little application, a C++ application um, in this folder called demo. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and open this folder and I'll close off these uh, background windows so we get a nice simple view. Uh, so here we have a basic application. Uh, it has a C make list to go along with it. Um, and there is a, a build folder into which the the contents of uh, the build will be placed. So uh, what I want to do is, is use this uh, CMake extension, but I want to make sure that my CMake is running remotely. Uh, so I'm gonna go back into my extensions and I'm just gonna double check that I have this set up. Uh, so notice here it's got the local extensions and it's got the remote extensions. So I need uh, CMake and CMake tools and also the C++ language uh, environment. I need this to be installed on the remote device, right? Because I want to compile and debug on the remote device. Uh, so you need to um, find the extensions and 
you can click a button up here that will say something like install on SSH. And what that will do is actually install it on the remote computer. Um, so with that in place, come over here to, uh, to CMake and I can say um, configure projects. And you see it will go through the normal procedure of uh, running the CMake configuration. Uh, and I can then hit uh, build and it will actually compile that, uh, that application. So I could in my terminal, uh, I could have a look in build and I could actually run uh, my application and it will do uh, you know, what it is supposed to do, control C to quit like a normal uh, Linux command line. Um, okay, but I'm using a, 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 an IDE, right? I want more than just a command line running, I want a full on debugger. So to set that up, uh, what we have to do is create this uh, launch.json uh, file. Uh, and so this is, oh, I need to install category extensions uh, C++. I should already have this installed. Let me go maybe from here with this open. I want to create uh, this and I want to automatic add configurations. Uh, here we go. Uh, what I want is uh, GDB is the debugger and I want to launch. So this will launch a new program. Uh, so then the rest of these settings are, are all fine. Uh, the one that I need is just to edit uh, this program. The name of my program, it's in a folder called build and it's called demo. So that was the name of the actual uh, executable. So if I save that, uh, I now get a run option here. Uh, I can go run start debugging. Uh, which will then build uh, and launch my program. Uh, so I see debug information and over here on the terminal, um, I have my app actually running. So I can, for example, set a breakpoint, uh, now do something to trigger it. And you see now I have a breakpoint, I can step through my code, I can inspect variables, I can do all the nice things um, of the debugger. And all of this is running remotely on the target Linux device. Um, so really quite a nice uh, debugging environment. Now, uh, one final thing uh, to keep in mind is if you are using a graphical application, so one that displays a graphical uh, windows, uh, then this basic setup here is, is not going to work. In that case, what I recommend that you do uh, is compile everything uh, inside of your IDE, but then switch over to something like a VNC window um, in order to actually view the, the graphical output. Uh, but for simple command line applications, uh, this is pretty much the, the main setup um, that you need. Uh, so I hope that is useful to you.